So uh, this is uh, this is this talk is mainly about uh, distributed systems testing. So Galera is nothing but uh, synchronous replication on MySQL. So today morning, if you attended the sessions, uh, there were talks about, about asynchronous replication and and also Galera cluster was mentioned in passing. But anyway, I'll explain to you uh, as we go on. And Docker, as you know, is a container uh, uh, technology for Linux currently. Well, it is being ported, but Let's stick to Linux now. And uh, NetM is what you can use to simulate packet losses and uh, all that with uh, traffic control in Linux. And uh, Anyway, so what's this title about? And uh, I mean, some people may ask why, what's corpus collapsum is. OK. Uh, so I if you look at that, that's a scan of the, some kind of a simulation of the brain. And what you see there is, is, a, is an organ. It's not an organ, what do you call that? It's, uh, it's like a bridge between your left and right brain, and it's called corpus callosum. And uh, there is a medical condition in which uh, people are born without it, or maybe there's something, some genetic condition in which, so in them, uh, the left and the right brain, they don't interact. And that condition is actually known as split brain. And uh, we have adopted that technology in computer science as well, as a split brain, you know? So split brain is essentially that. So your uh, right and left half of the brain do not uh, work in tandem. Yeah, so this is, it's like this. So corpus callosum is like a bus in between your left and your right brain. Anyway, so I'll just uh, add a few quotes, and then we can move forward. So network is reliable, a uh, fallacy of the distributed system. And this is a quote which appeared in, uh, in one of the articles by uh, Chief scientist from HP, I believe. Anyway, I have it in the further reading, so you can look at it uh, later on. So uh, it's a fallacy because network is never reliable, you know? Uh, right, because even uh, on a large scale, uh, maybe at a, on, at a scale of LAN, you can probably predict what can happen. But if you're talking about the whole internet, or the VANs, or, uh, or the fibers that you don't own, it's, it's, non, it's not reliable. And for distributed systems, unless we are uh, doing quantum entanglement or something like that, network is, going, network is our key. Anyway, so the second uh, quote is from Leslie Lamport, uh, who, is, uh, who has done a lot of stuff on distributed systems. Uh, I, I'll need a talk to just talk about him, you know, so he's that big in distributed systems. Anyway, so a distributed system is one in which is failure of a computer you didn't even know existed can render your own computer unusable. Uh, you know, this, uh, this also, uh, uh, alludes to your, our uh, modern day cloud computing but you know because uh, you have this uh, remote system uh, there amazon was down if you remember in europe and certain regions few days back and uh, amazon fire phone was not working because it could not connect to the server and it it was showing like the phone is not registered and stuff like that right right but uh, uh, this was for distributed system and that I, I just i'm just making the connection to the cloud computing and stuff like that uh, never attribute to malice, that which is adequately explained by stupidity, and this is about some Byzantine failure, which I'll explain later. It's a, uh, does anyone know what a Byzantine failure in a distributed system is? Okay. So this is a 20,000 feet view I'm going to give of what I'm talking about. Okay, so what are the things that are involved in uh, this uh, distributed systems testing of a Galera cluster? And what are the, and, and the other stuff? Anyway, so this is the actors. Uh, by actors, I mean who are the participants. So first, we have the database, where you store the data. And uh, I have written there as WSREP and PXE. PXE is for connected DB cluster, which is b based around the Galera cluster. But we can, uh, we can uh, interchangeably use it with uh, MariaDB Galera cluster or Galera cluster. Basically, Galera cluster is what I'm talking about here. And WSREP stands for Right Site Replication API. Uh, it's not there in uh, Oracle MySQL, but it's uh, something which is added uh, uh, to the Galera cluster itself, uh, which, which provides a way of replication through something called write sets. And it's not your uh, uh, traditional bin log replication at all. Now, Galera is a plugin which implements that write set replication API. And uh, it is the one which provides a bridge between different nodes in the cluster. Next thing is traffic control. We, uh, traffic control is a very uh, important and uh, very, uh, very much underrated command in Linux. And it can be used to do a whole lot of stuff. Uh, here I'm using it for uh, network emulation, which is NetM, to simulate losses and partitions and uh, delays and whatnot. 
Okay, so what's the next? Yes, the containers. Um, I'm using Docker for this, but again, uh, uh, when I wrote this slide, um, Docker was the only one. But nowadays, we are seeing more and more like Rocket or uh, uh, many implementations of lib uh, app, container, uh, app container specification and the others. Uh, so what's, what am I using for generating the load? I'm using Sysbench for now, Sysbench 0.5. And uh, maybe uh, in future I'm going to I, I'll also give uh, I'll also try with random query generator. And uh, for the network uh, I'm using DNS mask for uh, the resolution of uh, addresses because with the Docker the problem is uh, the linking pattern that Docker provides is a unidirectional one. So that's uh, it's if 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 I draw a functional relationship it's like A to B not it, you cannot do like a duplex stuff. Uh, it's more suited for like Redis client server kind of stuff, but kind of communication, but not for your uh, traditional cluster, you know, which requires uh, full duplex uh, communication. And then this Jenkins and all that. Anyway, so this is something that uh, I was, uh, I wrote that distributed systems is like a Kobayashi Maru. And uh, if you know Star Trek, you know what I mean. So it's like uh, an unwinnable uh, game. And uh, the only way to win it is to, to cheat on it, right? That's how uh, the captain won. Anyway, so what's the rationale for uh, all this testing that I'm doing? It's uh, well, it's for fun, but again, uh, I mean, there are there are some deliverables that are required from this kind of testing. Uh, so the, the the testing stresses on the P part of the CAP. CAP stands for consistency, availability, and partition tolerance, and that is something uh, that was put forward by Eric Brewster at a conference uh, in '90s. Basically, what it means is you, ca you can have only two uh, out of uh, three there. So you have to pick only any, any two out of three. So either, you you, either your system is consistent and available, or partition, tolerant and available, or all that. So that's, that's, uh, that's a problem which, uh, which has been there in distributed systems for quite a while now. Anyway, this talk is about the P, the partition tolerance. And since... Uh, I'll come back to this later on. Uh, one more thing is I wanted to uh, to test uh, uh, tolerance to latency variance. The problem with latency is it's fine if you have a latency which is uh, you know high, but it, once uh, if you have a, like a very high variance around the mean, that is the variance being square of standard deviation. Uh, you'll you'll start seeing uh, problems uh, with the the distributed system itself, because there are certain uh, foundations on which it's based on, and uh, and there are like timers and stuff, so th you, you can uh, face issues there. I know this sounds uh, very uh, abstruse at this point, but I'll uh, explain it better later on. Anyway, so uh, so for the, this Galera cluster, how it it's a synchronous replication, as I mentioned before. So it's it's not based on a quorum like you have with Cassandra or uh, React or uh, or other Amazon Dynamo and stuff like that. It's it's not uh, the, the the every commit every node is symmetrical. You can you can write to any node or read from any node. So what you need is a consensus that is uh, and not a quorum. So be, uh, for every commit, every commit needs to get replicated on all the nodes. So that's why uh, the network is a very integral part of uh, Galera cluster. And uh, so there are things like delay or a network partition or a delay in the network or non-graceful exits of the nodes. When I say non-graceful exit, I mean like a power loss uh, when a node gets power cycled uh, all of a sudden, you know. So I wanted to simulate real world networks uh, for the synchronous replication. So, so this is what uh, 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 illustration of Galera looks like. It's like, actually this is what Galera means in uh, a Scandinavian language as well. It means a boat, basically. Uh, but uh, you know, the people who are rowing are like the nodes. You know, they have to be in unison. If uh, if some of them are not in unison, you know, I don't know what happens to the boat. Maybe it collapses. Maybe something happens. <laughs> anyway, so this is how it looks. So you have like MySQL nodes, and you have like a replication. So all each node talks to all the nodes. And uh, unlike your uh, MySQL replication, this is a da data-centric approach. What that means is uh, the the locus, the 
the locus or the coordinates of the replication are dependent on the data itself rather than on an external entity or a separately maintained counter. So basically you have like a GTID, which is basically a UUID and a sequence number, where UUID is what determines uh, the, the cluster itself, and the sequence number is uh, incremented as uh, uh, write sets are replicated. For now, you can think of write sets, uh, write sets as a set containing all the uh, writes for a particular transaction. That's the simplest way to explain it. Uh, anyway, so there are multiple ways to uh, do a synchronous replication. Uh, there is what you call as a transactional replication, and then there is a Paxos-based uh, replication. Extended virtual synchrony is the third one. And uh, this uh, is one which uh, is known to provide a very high throughput, uh, subject to certain conditions, but very high throughput, uh, while providing fault tolerance and strong ordering guarantees. So the ordering guarantee is something that is very important uh, in synchronous replication. That is, what I mean by ordering guarantee is, suppose I do an insert and then an update. The update has to see the insert. Otherwise, you know, that's, that's what I mean by ordering. So there, there needs to be a strict ordering, and uh, that's what extended virtual synchrony provides the, at a global level, and that's very important. And uh, now uh, I've written there it uh, uh, causality and synchronous, and this is something that people often confuse each other with. W what causality implies is if I do a write here on this node, will I be able to read immediately from that node or not? The answer is no. So the causality impl implies that my, uh, uh, my you should be able to do it on the same node. That's fine. But will you be able to do it immediately on the, the node or not? For one thing, you are limited by the speed of light, right? So the synchronous replication here implies that uh, whatever you s whatever is there on this node will be there on the other nodes. Uh, and the guarantee is provided that it will be there on the other nodes, provided they don't fail. Uh, compared to say like async replication where you cannot say, here we can guarantee that it will be there. But if you want causality, there is additional uh, overhead which is involved. So that, you know, uh, causality requires that all the transactions uh, are like, uh, uh, is like a memory barrier uh, that has been introduced so that, you know, whatever you read on that node should Okay, I think it's the wire here. Anyway, so okay, so let me uh, mention that then there is a concept of flow control. Flow control is nothing but you know you can think of it as like uh, uh, one node is writing to another node and you know he cannot take it and he says you know slow down and stuff like that. <laughs> and there are several uh, types of flow control and uh, flow control is something that is, that's added on top of uh, extended virtual synchrony. Yeah. Yes, everything is a master. So uh, that's that's the beauty about synchronous replication. It's a symmetry. You don't have to worry about uh, rotation or uh, if you have worked with async replication and you have uh, you have had a slave which failed and you had to fix it. I hope you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. So you should be able to write or read from any node, and you can add any number of nodes. So when you add a node, like a fourth node, it uh, contacts one of the nodes. It just does a state transfer and it becomes another node. You know, it's like uh, it's like a party, you know. That's the way to describe it. Right. You need an odd number of nodes. That's because uh, for quorum purposes, you know, if you have a network partition, the the partition with odd number of nodes, actually uh, the odd number of nodes, uh, it, and uh, and it's assuming that every node is assigned a weight of one, because otherwise, if you assign different uh, uh, asymmetric weights, then uh, it's it's like the weight calculation. It will be a weighted uh, quorum then. Well, if you have like uh, certain nodes which are uh, which mean more to you from an application perspective, then you can say these nodes are more important for a quorum purpose. So, uh, what I, I don't care if like a tornado strikes, but these should be available. <laughs> so, because the thing with Galera is, if there is a network partition, suppose let's say there are like seven nodes, and it gets partitioned into three and four, the partition with three will not. Uh, take any writes because it's it's no longer and the the partition with four is becomes the primary component. So we have this uh, concept of a primary component. So the node which uh, so the comp other components 
you can do reads from them, but there's no point in doing writes because unlike other distributed systems, when this component joins uh, the main component, you can, uh, uh, the reason why it cannot take writes is when it joins this component, it, it has to do a state transfer. And if both of them take writes, there needs to be a way to reconcile them. And that adds a significant level of complexity, especially in a relational database system. Something like React has a, what you call as a commutative replicated de data types, uh, wherein uh, there is a way to reconciliate if there are partitions. Um, you can contact me outside if you want to know about CRDTs. It's a different topic. Anyway, so uh, the latency is the main thing. As I said, there's a global ordering involved. Uh, so what, how does this, now you, may think, now you may be thinking, so this, there is synchronous replication, but how do you achieve good performance? The, the, the catch here is that the nodes or the, the system, the cluster is allowed to reorder the writes for higher performance, but the reordering must be done uh, in the same way on all the nodes. So the order, the global ordering is, uh, is consistent across all the nodes. Uh, by that, what I mean is, like a sequence number 100 means the same write set on all, of the, on all the nodes. That, that's the important thing here. Uh, and uh, I can, and so this Galera is basically like layers, like replication is one of the layers. Certification is the other layer. And then there's a the group communication layer. Certification to describe briefly is basically it determines uh, when you have uh, conflicts how to resolve them in the primary component itself because uh, in a relational database if you are updating the same row on two different nodes obviously you will end up with conflicts and uh, only one of them is allowed to go forward and uh, this is not based on any atomic clocks or anything or the last write wins it's basically based on a global transaction ID uh, the sequence number which is the same across all the nodes to preserve global ordering. And the one with the highest uh, and uh, the remote one always wins. I'll show you a block diagram and that should explain it. So this is how it looks. So you have the DBMS and the layers and all that. And this is the diagram I wanted to mention. So the client does an update. Now it, after it, uh, now when it's doing ADU processing, it does, it does not have to take any logs. Unlike the other distributed systems like Paxos or Two-Face commit once, where you have to do like two-phase commit. And uh, that involves a lot of uh, network uh, round transfers. So now here it does commit. And now what it does is it gets replicated. And there is a global transaction ID which is assigned to it. That's the sequence number. Now the certification process essentially involves whether, to, whether we can apply this right set or not. The application is done asynchronously. The, the part about certification and, mo and uh, moving the right set is done synchronously. So the, the overhead involved in actually applying the right set to the node does not come into account to the, into uh, the client's uh, processing time. So once the certification is fine, uh, the OK is returned to client or a deadlock if there's a deadlock. And the principle, one of the main principles used here is that the remote write always wins. And uh, that's done uh, so that there are no multiple round trip uh, round trips just for that anyway so i hope this clarifies it but uh, you can ask me a question in the end if you are uh, if you don't know and uh, i can talk about galera itself in the end but this talk is about uh, testing of network partitions so i'm i'll just skim over this so this is how it looks all the nodes are supposed to be in sync state uh, donor is one who provides his uh, state to the new joiner you know he's like uh, the mentor you can say uh, anyway, where did it start? So it started with a bug, so all this uh, partition tolerance testing. So what it was causing was the loss of primary component. In some cases, it was causing tr crashes. And uh, what Galera uh, ensures is a concept called HAT. It's uh, HAT stands for Highly Available Transactions. So we need to provide a high availability uh, and, a trans uh, and acid compliance which is guaranteed through, uh, which is guaranteed on a, on a single node level by InnoDB, on a cluster level by Galera. So this is a diagram uh, where I've shown it. So what, what can happen is, essentially, in this network of yours, if you have like a bad node, a node with a bad uh, uh, network interface card or a bad disk, and it's not dead, it's bad, 
So suppose uh, you are like hiking on, on a mountain and you have uh, someone who is, you know, who cannot walk. He slows the entire group down, right? And uh, while in that case you cannot evict him, in this case we evict the node. <laughs> I hope you don't evict uh, anyone like that. Anyway, so these are the tests that I do here. And uh, some of these tests involve like chaos testing is where uh, the nodes are randomly uh, evicted from the cluster through, uh, through non-graceful means and uh, added back and to see how it works. And this chaos testing is roughly uh, named after this chaos monkey, which uh, Netflix uh, did, if you, are, uh, if, you have heard of, if you have heard about it. Uh, chaos monkey essentially is like that, where you have like multiple nodes, and uh, the monkey kills nodes uh, randomly, and see how the network is, and uh, how it, uh, you know, the network, the cluster should behave uh, normally, even when there is a disturbance of that sort. And these are the other ones, like network loss is where, uh, as I said, mentioned before, the node itself is a bad node with a bad network, or maybe so, and it's slowing down the whole cluster. So there's no higher menace than a distributed systems testing, I've written here. <laughs> and it's fun. You know, distributed systems testing is fun like this. You know, you can, you, you get, you get to have a knife and, you know, you can randomly do stuff and see how it behaves. So uh, let me briefly describe what NetM is. So NetM is basically a, a module which is available in Linux, and uh, it allows you to simulate uh, packet loss, delay, corruption. Suppose you have like uh, have a set of network interfaces. Uh, I mean, when I say network interfaces, I mean like ETH0, ETH1, all that, the soft ones, not not the hardware network interfaces. And this can also be a virtual uh, interfaces like V, TH, V, all that, which Docker does. So if you have like a if you have a set of interfaces and you want to uh, and you are exchanging packets between them and you want to simulate some kind of a, a, you know packet loss or a delay or a corruption or duplication and it does a lot of stuff a lot of other stuff you can use NetM for it and it was essentially developed out of NistNet uh, some time back it's it's pretty old actually and uh, we use like traffic control QDisk for uh, doing all that. And uh, essentially, uh, now I'm adding like packet loss and delay and other things. Whereas some things like uh, reordering or duplication, the TCP layer itself handles. The application does not does not have to do it. But uh, Galera also has a UDP layer, so that's where those tests come into picture. I think like Galera can speak UDP or TCP, whichever way you want. So the initial setup was uh, I was attaching the network uh, QDIS to the bridge itself, and that was affecting all the nodes. And uh, later, after after that, I attached uh, the QDisk only to the virtual uh, interfaces which were exposed by the Docker externally to the host, so which are named like VTH0, VTH1, and stuff like that. But what happened there was it was affecting only the packets which were coming out of the node, and it was not affecting the nodes, the packets going inside, because for that you need a separate thing called IFB, and it stands for Intermediate Functional Block Device or something. Anyway, that was uh, it was getting too complex. So what I decided to use was uh, NS Center. NS Center basically what it does is each uh, each container has its own network namespace. So I'll come back to the namespace part later. Uh, so b by a net uh, namespace, what I mean is a process in the container can listen on all the processes inside the container in their own containers can listen on their own ports without any conflicts. So it provides an isolation in terms of uh, network. It provides a network isolation. So I use this command called nscenter, which uh, essentially uses a uh, syscall called uh, setns. Uh, it uses uh, that call, and uh, with that, I was able to attach the QDisk inside the container itself to the ETH0 of the container. Anyway, so th this is about NetM. So I don't know what's the, uh, OK. So this is how the test looks. Uh, I'll briefly describe some of these tests. Oh, okay. So chaos testing. What is chaos testing? So you have like nodes, several nodes, with the synchronous replication going on between them, and Sysbench is used to uh, round robin writes to all of them at a very high uh, throughput. And nodes are killed at random. You know uh, how I'm killing them is through like uh, sick kill. I actually wanted to use docker restart uh, minus t0, but that doesn't work. <coughs> it takes, still takes like one second. It gives one second for the node to, you know, uh, it gives a grace period, small grace period. 
No, no, no. My aim is not to do a clean shutdown. My no, aim. No, it doesn't do a d clean one, but it does like something in between, you know. It, there's a small grace period. I wanted to simulate something like pulling the power cable, you know, yeah. something like that. So that's what uh, Docker. Ins so I use Docker Inspect to identify the container, get the PID, and then I use SQL for that. So in this case, less than half of the nodes are chosen because uh, if more than half the nodes in a cluster is down, w what's the point, right? The quorum, there's no quorum itself. so. <laughs> Uh, that's the point of the uh, testing here. So less than half of the nodes are chosen, and uh, the that that it's not there the test end, but uh, these nodes join back, and uh, there's a period between when they when they are removed and when they join back, and that period determines uh, uh, what kind of state transfer they require. So there's a snap uh, snapshot state transfer, which is a full state transfer, and the incremental one where you know only the right sets which were missing are transferred and this uh, this i these tests i used to test the composability of transactional databases that sounds a little uh, um, complex but what i essentially meant there was when you have a transaction when you have a database like inodb which provides transactional guarantees the components of the database itself should also be transaction uh, aware otherwise uh, because these state transfer i wanted to test whether the these are transactional in nature or not they were not actually so there were things fixed after that, which, which is which is because uh, if if I did all this and there were no bugs, I would I would have felt bad, right? So there were some good bugs and they were fixed, and they are they are released in Galera 3.8 and 3.9 actually, mostly in 3.8, but some some in 3.9. Okay, so this is the chaos testing, and this is the network loss one. The network loss one is uh, where I chose a subset of nodes. I attached the queue disk uh, corresponding to the network loss. So saying like, uh, uh, you, you can do some, some very good distributions there. Like you can do like Pareto distribution, and you can model like real world noise and stuff like that. And you can say like, I need a 20% packet loss and a delay of five seconds with a standard deviation of one millisecond. A delay of five millisecond with a standard deviation of one millisecond and stuff like that. You know, you can model it really well. Right. Right, right. Well, uh, that was just an example, but I used uh, some different values there. And you can actually ch check our Jenkins. It's uh, open, and I'll, I have the links in the end. You can see those tests running and all that when I'm running them. Uh, anyway, so then there is a concept of uh, I'll come back to these parts later, but basically, what it involves is whether I keep the, there's a constant load which is applied to the cluster. And uh, th the second point means whether the queue is corresponding to the NetM, is it removed or is it kept in the end or not, and, uh, and how the sanity checks are done. So basically, my aim here is whether the uh, cluster will form a primary component or not, one of the aims. The second aim is to see how long it takes to recover, you know. Because, you know, network problems are, uh, you know, everyone experiences them, even the big ones, Amazon. <laughs> anyway. So this is how it looks. Uh, because the, all these tests, I wanted uh, not to run on my laptop, but I wanted them in continuous integration. Because uh, with continuous integration, every commit or every set of commits get tested. And uh, we can bisect them easily. And it, pro it ensures a good quality of the product that we release. Now, so this is how it looks. So Jenkins, I build the Docker images. Then I start a DNS mask in its own Docker container. Then I bootstrap the first node. Then I start the sysbench and load that node with all the data, a uh, lot of data. You can do that. Then I start other nodes who do like state transfer. Then I do like some pre-sanity test to ensure that whatever I see in the end is not because of something before. So you know it was not broken to begin with. So I so I run like some pre-sanity test. Then I use uh, this NS enter and to insert uh, Q disk to some of these nodes. Then I use sysbench uh, to do a round robin spraying of load. So what I mean is, suppose you have like five nodes, it uh, does uh, it does sysbench does its uh, OLTP or uh, actually I, I have added like DDL and yeah, so in essentially OLTP workload on all the nodes in a round ro round robin fashion. Now after all this is done, uh, I get to decide whether to attach or keep the Q disk uh, because there are two different. Uh, 
things that I'm looking for, which I'll come back to la on later. So, and then after, after that I do sanity checks, and then I do a reconciliation. Reconciliation is basically uh, to ensure that, you know, whatever happened, uh, the cluster can, uh, uh, that to test the resilience of the cluster, you know, how long does it take for the cluster to come back? And then the post sanity and all that. Anyway, so what are the parameters involved? So sysbench, uh, how many threads I'm using and uh, all that. With sysbench, you can configure like table sizes and number of tables and stuff like that. And uh, the reconciliation period, as I mentioned, for reconciliation, uh, uh, that, that's one of those things. And the number of uh, lost nodes, that is the subset of the nodes to which I attach the QDisk. <laughs> so this is how I uh, describe it. So uh, the, the distributed system is like a um, set of uh, pipes you have, and you know you, you have those walls, and you get to turn them and see if the other node explodes or not when there's too much pressure. <laughs> anyway, so these are the other parameters. I've mentioned F-Sync. I'll come back to the F-Sync later on. So okay, now let's talk about containers. Uh, if some of you are not uh, aware of uh, what containers are and stuff like that. So why did I not virtualize it? So that may be the first question you're asking, right? Uh, well, I didn't virtualize because I did not need to, because uh, Linux and other operating systems provide this way of uh, isolating your processes uh, so that you don't have to virtualize. And this is done in Linux through the concept of namespaces. So you have like PID namespace, mount namespace, network namespace, UTS namespace, and user namespace. Oh, I remembered all five. Okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, so namespaces are used here to provide isolation in terms of like PID. So you can have a with a PID namespace, you can have a process inside the container with a PID one and one outside, which is in it. So you can have like a parallel. Uh, you can have processes with the same PID inside and outside. So there's no collision. That's what I mean. The objective is not to have the same PID, but what I mean here here is there's a, the a separate jail uh, in a FreeBSD parlance. Anyway, so I wanted to have a simplicity in network. Uh, by that, what I mean is, uh, and I've written there as a logical scalability. What I mean is, when I run this test, I don't run it on like three nodes. I run it on like 15 or 20 nodes, or maybe 40 or 50, or depending on hardware limitations. I just wanted to add the nodes and uh, and uh, make it join the network, you know, in a seamless fashion. I didn't want to configure all the uh, that I used to do with QMU, a uh, lot of hacks there. And uh, Docker simplified uh, networking quite a lot, and that was one of the things I used Docker and not LXC, for instance. <coughs> and one application per node here implies that everything that I did here. Uh, is based on assumption that there's nothing installed on the node. So everything that runs sysbench, DNS mask, they're all in their own containers. And this to uh, simply, so that I can run it uh, on laptop or anywhere I want. And it can pull those images. Uh, if you are familiar with the Docker registry, you can just say that Docker run XYZ, and if XYZ is not there on your uh, system, it, will, it pulls it. Otherwise, if it's there, then it runs it. So you know, it's that simple. And I wanted to have like reproducibility and portability and all that, uh, so that you know when I say that oh, this this is wrong, and so when I show it to my colleague to fix it, and you know he also can reproduce it and uh, with the consistent configuration, because uh, the the configuration consistency provided by Docker file, of course. Right. Okay, so I've written QMU vis-a-vis -vis Docker and all that. I could have used uh, KVM, but uh, the, all those reasons that I mentioned uh, are why I didn't use KVM. But KVM also has its own advantages, like it provides like uh, kernel same same page merging, or you can do like NUMA simulation and stuff like that. But those I didn't want here. Actually, KSM is very very uh, good, and uh, something that Docker provides in kernel 3.18 through. Uh, it d does not provide it directly, but uh, there's a overlay FS which was added in kernel 3.18, uh, which provides something similar for page caches. And it's, uh, it does not take as much CPU as a KSM. KSM basically what it does is, if there are identical pages in your memory, it deduplicates them. And 
and by, and it's not a simple thing actually. <laughs> so I needed scalabil uh, scalability. So performance, of course, I got uh, uh, with the uh, namespaces and without any overhead of virtualization, I got a bare metal performance here. Okay, this is about container networking and how I used uh, DNS mask here. Linking did not help me because uh, what happens is when a new node joins the cluster, the 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 existing guy knows that this guy joined, but uh, sorry, uh, one of the ways it does not work. You know, it goes this way, but this uh, it does not go the other way. Uh, the linking was a unidirectional one. I needed a bidirectional, fully duplex uh, networking. So what I did here is I used uh, a DNS mask and uh, its host file. I didn't use DHCP portion of it. It's only the DNS part I used. And uh, the DNS mask container, it regularly hubs itself and the host file is passed as a volume docker volume to it and uh, as and when new nodes are added on the host side i add the ip addresses of these new hosts to the file and the docker uh, dns mask takes it because it's hopping itself every second right <laughs> it's like a hack but uh, when i started doing it there was nothing but now there are a lot of uh, cool solutions which are coming up but none of them are still yet uh, still there yet like docker is looking at uh, using open virtual switch and uh, all that and there's a huge proposal there uh, you can go and go ahead and read it uh, but it's still not uh, in the main line sorry right yeah because that's one of the reasons I use docker as I said uh, the network simplicity is very important to me because I don't want to set up bridges and taps and tunes and all that <laughs> And I had to do that before all this, and because I have been using KVM for like kernel testing and whatnot, and the, and it's not fun. <laughs> and if you want to do it like 20 containers, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, anyway, okay. So what are the testing methods? So here I'll briefly describe what what kind of uh, noise that you may see in your regular data center. So you have this transient noise. By that, what I mean is uh, you may see like a packet loss which lasts for like 20 seconds or like five minutes and it goes away. So that's one of the scenarios that I try to model. And then there is what I call as a lasting sickness. A lasting sickness is one where the node has like a bad disk or a bad RAID or it's doing some battery learning or whatever. Uh, so it's like a sick node, it's not dead, it's sick. If it is dead, a dead node is better because it's evicted, it's already gone from the cluster, but a sick node is not. It slows down everyone. And especially since there is a flow control involved here, it's very important. So as I've said, the sick nodes are bad. The dead ones are fine. Sick ones are like zombies, in a way. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so this is uh, the one of the methods where the Q disk is deta detached after the load is applied in the flow chart. So the objective here is, to see how long uh, the cluster takes to re, uh, regain its balance that it lost. And in this case, there are no nodes evicted, and this is to model a transient noise, you know, something that is not ephemeral, it is something that is quite ephemeral in nature. And this is done with a subset which is larger than the quorum. So it's like if there are seven nodes, I test with like six, uh, not six, five, for instance. Uh, six, uh, six may be too high. So anyway, five, rather more than uh, four. And so, so my objective here is that the cluster uh, recovers, uh, uh, and there's a, you know, p uh, the primary component that is formed has all the nodes in it. Now the second one is where the Q disk is kept till the end, and this is to model nodes which are sick. And here the objective is the primary component is formed, but without those nodes, without those nodes, and those nodes are evicted, you know, permanently thrown out of the cluster. Uh, and since they themselves don't throw themselves out which they should, but they don't. And this is done with a subset which is smaller than the quorum. So if there are like 10, I do it with like 3. Because if I do it, uh, if more than a quorum number of nodes are having a sickness, you know, have, have like a bad disk, then what's the point, right? Your network is already host. And uh, which method is more pertinent? Actually, uh, when I was testing, the second one was more pertinent, but both are equally pertinent. Anyway. <laughs> So the state transfer issues are something that I test here. Um, there are some certain race conditions involved in uh, if you have like multiple nodes which are 
rejoining the cluster, there are certain race conditions involved and stuff like that. And uh, this is uh, one more thing, direct load to, load to the affected node. When I'm using sysbench and there are nodes which are affected with this uh, artificial packet loss, I'm not uh, uh, directing any load to them because I don't want the sysbench load to be affected by this artificial uh, uh, envelope that I've added. So the sysbench load is to the nodes which are uh, not affected and the affected nodes get uh, all the uh, traffic only through replication. So I, I wanted to stress, uh, stress it to that level because I, I, didn't, I wanted uh, the sysbench at a full throttle to hit all the other nodes and these nodes to get uh, uh, the replication traffic. Right. Worst case, you know, uh, right. I should call this Murphy test or something. Anyway. So yeah, uh, the, what are the other kind of noises that I added? Something like F-Sync. So you can use something like libbit my data and uh, you can, uh, what you can do is you can LD preload your F-Sync. What that does is it makes uh, that node, uh, all the F-Sync from that node disappear. So you know, it. what I can do with this is you I can create a, like a really fast node and really slow node and you know, introduce further imbalance uh, that I could not do with network. And uh, how I do it with uh, Docker is through uh, LD, I pass the LD preload as, uh, I install the, uh, the, uh, the library inside the Docker before when I'm building it, and then I pass the LD preload as an environment variable, that is Docker minus E, Docker run minus E, and uh, that's how it gets loaded. And I wanted to correlate how it works with the network, you know, because network is one of the is one of the pieces. There's a disk, and then there is a CPU. But you don't often see issues with CPU like this. But you you see with memory, disk, and network. Anyway, so uh, I'll quickly go over this. This is how the sysbench is used, and uh, uh, sysbench also has uh, new patches in 0.5 where it can reconnect on a partition. Earlier it used to disconnect, but now it it can I, I can make it reconnect. And uh, what are the, uh, yeah, as I said, load on affected nodes and distribution of load is round robin and all that. And probably in future I'll use like HAProxy or MaxScale or one of those. And uh, what is the nature of data load? Uh, it's um, in many cases just DML, but I've also added DDL because what happens in a uh, distributed system with synchronous replication, it is, it's not just Galera cluster, it's also like a Google F1 and others like that or a sp a Google F1 is built on Spanner and or Foundation DB or Cockroach DB and all that. Uh, have you heard of Cockroach DB here? No? Okay. It's uh, essentially an open source clone of uh, whatever is there in Google in form of Google F1. Google F1 is their own transaction aware uh, uh, database that they use to replace uh, some of the stuff for Google AdWords and all that. Uh, I have the Google F1 paper in the further reading. You can go ahead and read it. It's a uh, very informative and uh, very uh, simple one, as in like you can read it easily if you have the time. <laughs> anyway, uh, in future I want to use a random query generator to do some fuzz testing. Uh, if you're not familiar with fuzz testing, what basically it means is, uh, I mean there is something uh, in syscall world you have like system call fuzzing and stuff like that, where you pass uh, invalid parameters and stuff like that and see how the system behaves. And uh, what I, what we test there is not uh, what we test there is to ensure that the system does not crash under uh, undefined uh, inputs. You know that's how we, that's what that's one of the aims of fuzz testing. Anyway, so what's the fix uh, that was done? Because uh, from all this testing, if there's no fix, then what's the point, right? So there were fixes that were made to Galera, which were done in like 3.5, 3.8, and 3.9. Uh, so, so eviction. How does the eviction work? So it's, it's basically nothing but stone. It's where the stone node in the the head, as they call it, and it's a permanent eviction, unless the system administrator, uh, you know, starts it again, knowing that uh, after he has fixed the bad disk or bad network or whatever. And how it works is every node maintains a counter of uh, the bad node, and uh, once the counter uh, exceeds a threshold, uh, that node is evicted. However, uh, this eviction, uh, for this eviction to occur, there needs to be a quorum. It's not just one node decides the other node is bad and kicks it out. Because that can cause some serious issues, and it can cause, uh, and it happened with uh, GitHub, I, I believe, uh, where uh, and with Pacemaker, I think, where what happened is uh, this node said that node is bad, that node said this node is bad, and they shot each other. You know, so we don't want that to happen. So when we evict a node, there needs to be a quorum uh, on uh, 
that node should be evicted or not. And once there is a quorum, that node is evicted. And when I say eviction, uh, that node uh, is uh, removed from the Galera's application level network. It's not like uh, uh, <laughs> we do a, uh, I don't know, shutdown on that node or something. No, not like that. The node still remains in its state so that the sysadmin or whoever wants can examine it, but it will no longer be in the network. It's evicted from the network. Yeah, as I said, their quorum is required, <coughs> so not so that they don't shoot each other. And this is about uh, do Docker and core dumps and all that because uh, because what happens is uh, you have a Docker and uh, yes, you have containers, but there are certain things still which are which if you do in a container in a privileged container, it can affect the host. It's not isolated enough. There are a lot of things uh, that are not isolated enough in a container, and for that, if you need. You can e either use a VM or you can do some, some stuff that like I did where I passed the volume from the host to the guest and I did some sysctl uh, temporarily which changed uh, the codem pattern on host as well as guest and, and when the thing crashed uh, and all that, it's, uh, I can explain to you in detail later on. But this is one thing that I faced. This is one of the issues that I faced when I had to because in all these cases, uh, either the n there are two fa normal failure scenarios. Uh, if there's a bug, either the node hangs or either the node crashes. So when the node crashes, you have a codum. When the node hangs, it's worse, right? It just hung. So in that case, I have like a watchdog kind of thing where it sends a six egg V and it kills it, and so it generates a code. So I can examine it and see what's wrong. And this is about WAN segments. Galera cluster is not just for LAN, so you can have like a WAN stuff. So you can have like a, uh, uh, you can think of it as like a galaxy cluster. You have like galaxies, you know, and they're all connected. So it's essentially like that, what I mean. So in a LAN, uh, suppose you have like five, uh, 10 nodes, and you can have like uh, five in one LAN and f one data center, five in another one, you know, like that. May not be five and five, maybe like six and four, probably, you know. Uh, so I did uh, some uh, ran, uh, d and uh, in this testing and uh, in Galera you can provide something called segment ID so that you can make it uh, aware of this and I used uh, I used that as a latency multiplier because I wanted to test a real world network so the WAN uh, latency was much higher than a LAN, net la LAN latency and I wanted to test stuff like donor selection which Galera has like it has a smart donor selection for state transfers and all that and to test joiner starvation and other things. Anyway, so this is the code. The code is there on GitHub. It's uh, more of a proof of concept, but uh, I want to move it to, uh, in, in, to develop, develop it into a framework, uh, something like Jepson, if you've heard of it. Uh, that's done for like MongoDB and all that. So I want to develop it into a proper framework. Uh, anyway, so these are the, uh, and that's the second link is for the code of Perconex DB cluster. The third one is for the Galera uh, plugin. And these are all the Jenkins ones. You can go and look at it. Our Jenkins is open. Uh, you cannot run anything, but you can look at it. And you can download the logs and all that. We don't mind. Actually, we, we, we are more than happy if you, if you examine all that and you know, submit bugs or fixes and all that. Anyway, so uh, there are some to-dos here, like I want to do better orchestration and signal proxying with Docker. Signal proxying you cannot do with SQL and all that, but I want to do it for 6 SIGV, actually. Six eggv for eleven signal eleven, yeah. And uh, so I want to develop from proof of concept to a framework and all that. And I want to use the HCD and uh, some some other stuff for bootstrapping uh, purposes. Future work, okay. Uh, I want to do some fault injection in memory. Uh, so this is this is something you can do in Linux uh, through what what you can call as a poison memory. There are many ways you can poison a memory uh, at boot time or through like M advice, uh, HW poison and stuff like that. You can poison memory and you can see how the application behaves with the poison memory. And I want to test uh, Eno space. I want to simulate Eno space, which is lack of disk space. Or maybe I can use like dev full as a device and test it probably. And uh, I want to into. I, I said the F sync was removed, but I want to try with the uh, uh, variants of F sync or uh, variants in uh, I/O itself like to simulate like a really old rusty hard disk and uh, a fusion IO and all that, you know, how it works out, right? I, I de uh, ideally, you want all the nodes in a synchronous replication cluster to have the same hardware characteristics, but in a real world, that's not the case. 
and I want to do some CPU stuff like with Numa and all that, but I don't think I can do it uh, with Docker uh, because you can do it with KVM, but you cannot do a Numa simulation with uh, Docker. With uh, KVM, you could you you, you can do like uh, maybe two, two package and whatnot. Yeah, maybe. But I don't think I can do Numa in that. Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I want to do some C group stuff on top of this. And maybe I want to do some hot plugging, which you can do again with KVM. You can hot plug. You can do memory ballooning, for instance. Well, you don't need memory ballooning here, though. Anyway, so more network stuff, because uh, this is also, uh, it also applies to UDP. So when I tested with TCP, the duplication uh, and uh, reordering and all didn't come into picture, because the application layer never saw it. The transport layer took care of it. So. I want to test with UDP, so that's all the future work. And I want to use, uh, actually, uh, NetM supports so something, oh, some really complex distribution of uh, real world networks. I want to try all that. I think it's called GEM or something. Uh, currently, I'm using Pareto distribution. Yeah, this is a code that I uh, picked from a blog on distributed systems uh, from uh, a researcher in uh, University of Berkeley. His name is Peter Bailey, and he said that. In real world, in a in a in a uh, you know in a, in a normal life, worst case never improves the average case. But in distributed systems, when you develop for a worst case, it always improves the average case. <coughs> and by that, what I mean is, right? I want to okay. So when when I design a cluster for uh, uh, you know for a bad network, it also improves the normal functioning of the cluster in many ways. Because uh, some of these things don't uh, occur often. They are like uh, black swans, as, uh, as that theory said from Nicholas Taleb. He wrote a book on black swans, right? So uh, the bad things never happen uh, often. You know, they, they occur in births or something like that. Now, uh, once I do uh, the worst case analysis and improve it for worst case, it also improves it for the average case. That's uh, the other objective. Because uh, I want a good network, also a normal cluster, to gain benefits from all this, from all the fixes, I mean. Anyway, so the future work is like I want to try with corrupt, corrupt nodes, because this is a database, right? InnoDB is an ACID compliant database uh, with MV MVCC full MVCC semantics and uh, uh, transaction isolation of repeatable read, unlike PostgreSQL, which is read committed. Anyway, I pointed that way because that's a PostgreSQL. Uh, thing is going on. Anyway, so I want to try with some inconsistencies and all stuff like that. And uh, manual eviction, all that. And this is a slide about eventual consistency. I just wanted to make fun of in eventual consistency. So I, I just added this slide. And uh, I, I, I mentioned the cap there. But uh, there is an additional factor which is involved in eventual consistent systems. That is of latency. For instance, Cassandra and others, they, ha they provide a, uh, Consistency, but uh, at a cost of latency. So you can uh, you can say like I need more. If you can take more latency, you can get better uh, 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 cap and all that. Anyway, well, so the question is: Is Galera an eventual consistent system? No, no, it's not. It's not actually. It's a strongly consistent system, for with acid semantics and not base one. Which base stands for basic availability, eventual consistency, and something. Anyway, but acid stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability which we all need. Uh, and bounded, this is a, so some of these are some complex uh, concepts, like bounded staleness that you can have in the eventual consistent system. You can have like, a, you can say like, I need a, a time-based or a version-based uh, staleness and all that. So PBS stands for probabilistic bounded staleness, which was added to Cassandra, I think in 2011. So what I wanted to say here is, uh, there, there, there was a post on whether acid compliance can be achieved with the, at the same time, you know, while trying for cap. And yes, it can be done. So that's that's one of those things. But in cap itself, uh, you'll have to do some cheating uh, in order to uh, gain full cap. By that, what I mean is, in a Galera cluster, so, so when there's a partitioning, the component which is separated from the mothership, from the primary component, cannot obviously take rights, right? So the cheating here is the other parts, the uh, load balancer can know that this component is no longer available and no longer direct the rights to it. So, you know, 
this single cluster may not achieve the cap, but the whole uh, whole architecture of your uh, system uh, may be able to achieve it. That's what I mean there. Anyway, this is a further reading. This was a lot of uh, inter uh, you, these are clickable links, by the way. A uh, lot of uh, good uh, documentation. So and stuff like don't settle for eventual consistency, which is the ACMQ article, I think, and uh, on, on all that. Byzantine fault tolerance, which I didn't mention here, but it's it's also very nice. Uh, and these are some of the other nice articles like hat not cap introducing highly available transactions which basically talks about how to, how to have highly available transactions uh, uh in a cap kind of system right and there's this is about linear eligibility and serializability and all that worst case distributed systems design okay this is about uh, this is just I added a slide because my employer sent me here so yeah we are hiring and uh, if you are a uh, <coughs> build engineer, and this is in my team, but we have like other positions which don't matter for now. Uh, I mean, for me. <laughs> so this is for like build engineer, C, C++ developer. If uh, you're interested in doing all this development of distributed systems and testing them, uh, or uh, if you are a good, uh, if you run some uh, Gen2 or something on your laptop and on your servers and do your own package maintenance or something like that, you can contact me. Anyway, this is a conference that we have in April uh, that many MySQL developers and cons uh, sysadmins and everyone attends. And this is my talk there, and where I'm talking about uh, securing databases uh, for containers and services, with system D, and all that. Uh, my talk on uh, Galera cluster didn't get uh, accepted because probably they, are, they have heard it too often now. Anyway, so this is me. Uh, I'm available. Um, so as I said, I'm HA, I'm HA compliant as well. I'm highly, highly available, <laughs> except maybe when I'm at conferences, probably. Anyway, so this is all the image credits, and that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can let me know before you or after you clap. Uh, you can ask me a question on uh, Galera or MySQL or Percona products or pretty much anything uh, relating to this. That's Percona server or extra backup or extra DB cluster now or outside. Oh, okay. We develop distributed systems, but this stuff is complex always. All this HDMI and VGA and all. Yeah, what the hell happened now? Yeah, you can also ask me about Docker and what, do you, what is NetM, yeah. Because I've been using Docker for a while. So all the war stories of Docker. Actually, this talk was uh, in a different, different conference, was in a container uh, track. <laughs> because it fits in all, in, in, a different, in all kinds of tracks. Yes. Yes, I have. So if you are using with multiple data centers, uh, you can, uh, one thing is you use to use quorum weight. That is one of those things. And the second thing is to use uh, the segment uh, IDs. There's a WS rep provider option. Uh, it's called PC.segment. And uh, you can say that all the nodes in this data center have the same segment ID. You know? So you can assign from one and up to whatever number you want. It's a 32-bit number. So unless you are Having that many data centers, you don't have to. You're exceeding uh, two, two to the two raised to 31 minus one data centers. It should be enough. And this talk is also recorded, I believe. So uh, there was a similar talk uh, that I did at LinuxConf AU and before that at RICON on similar topics, but. Uh, uh, the videos of which are also available on internet. Wow. This place, I think they chose this venue because, you know, it's databases, right? They want to keep those secure. You know, so it's like the subterranean. Uh, uh, for Postgres and. Maybe for NoSQL databases, they'll give somewhere uh, top, you know. <laughs> I don't know. 